guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am doing a video that I have never done before. So if you guys are around on booktube, you might have seen the video I think that have started with Books and Lala and she is talking about um, reading recommendations from her subscribers or reading recommendations from other booktubers and it gave me an idea to do reading recommendations from my favorite authors. So when I first started out on this challenge, I thought that I could just go into a regular bookstore and browse around and see if there were any blurbs on the front of a book that said, had like a quote from one of my favorite authors. So I thought it would be, you know, as easy as that. Um, then I went through three bookstores and I didn't find any, any of that. Um, I guess in Australia, a lot of the covers prefer not to put blurbs from individual authors. Instead, they list um, magazines or like review or periodicals. So I had absolutely no luck, zero luck with uh, bookstores. So then I was like, okay, well, I'll do it in the library. So while I was going through the library, um, I decided to keep going until I got four books that I could read and see if because I liked the author's book that is blurbing it, might I also like the book that they blurbed, if that makes sense. So it took me over an hour to find four books. And while I was doing it, um, the only thing was I couldn't read the synopsis on the back of the book. So all I was looking for was the blurbs, like the name for the blurbs. And I was just looking for a name of an author that I had already read and I already liked their book. That was the only factor. Um, now the one thing that I will mention is that when I was looking, I guess that there might be some bias depending on the spines, like the interesting spines, because obviously I was trying to pick like randomly, but I was picking spines that looked pretty just because they drew my attention, I guess. So that would be the one bias in this. So I managed to pick up four books and I'm going ahead, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about them. So. Um, two of them I actually have turned out to be translated works, which I am reading for Translated Women Month anyway, um, so that worked out really well. So I'm going to talk about those first. So the first one is Sweet Days of Discipline by Fleur Jaggi, and this is blurbed by Sheila Hetty. So earlier this year I read Motherhood by Sheila Hetty and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, and Sheila Hetty says, Jaggi has a startling ability to go beyond. Beyond the sentimental heart, the writerly niceties, the, con the conventions that bind us, and the messy effusions of contemporary life. So um, I do know what this is about now, since I already picked it up um, and I have already started it. So this is a boarding school novel following a young girl who is sent to Switzerland post-war um, to kind of get her education in a very safe place while the countries are rebuilding themselves. And this is an Italian translation. So this is book number one that I'm going to read and see if Sheila Hetty's recommendation may lead me to like this book or not. Can I trust Sheila Hetty's recommendation? Okay, and the next one, which is also translated, is Crimson by Nivia Kornielsen. And this book is from Greenland. So this one follows a set of young people in Greenland in Nuuk. So the other, the other name for this book, other than Crimson, is Last Night in Nuuk, and it is following, I believe, um, young people as they're going out and drinking, and the nightlife, and queer culture, and um, I'm just really intrigued. I've never read anything set in Greenland, and this one was blurbed by Sophie McIntosh, who wrote The Water Cure. So I read The Water Cure earlier this year, and I gave it, I think, three and a half or four stars. The longer that I've sat with it, the more that I like it, if that makes sense. Like, it's it's unforgettable, even though I wasn't sure how much I loved it at the time. So, Sophie McIntosh says, ferocious, inventive, and unlike anything I've read in a very long time. So, we shall see if I can trust Sophie McIntosh's recommendation, and if I will also like Crimson. So, the next two books are completely random and... Honestly, the, the thing that's hilarious about this is that this one is Meat Space and this one is The Butcher's Hook and I don't talk about it that often on the channel, but I'm vegan, so it's just kind of a funny coincidence that I think I got two books about meat. These two, I have absolutely no idea what they're about, so 
Uh, yeah, let's see, let's find it out together. Um, okay, so Meat Space by Nikesh Shikla um, is blurred by Matt Haig, who wrote The Humans. And The Humans, I really enjoyed, and I gave four stars earlier this year. Um, he says, Meat Space is funny, damn funny. You should really switch off your computer and just read it. So, let's see what it's about. Um, Kitab has had a rough few months. His girlfriend left him, he got fired from the job he hated for writing a novel on company time, but the novel didn't sell and now he's burning through his mom's life insurance money. His dad has more success with women than he does, and his Facebook comments get more likes. Kitab is reduced to spending all his time in his flat with his brother Aziz, coming up with ideas for novelty tumblers, and composing amusing tweets. But now even Aziz has left him, traveling to America to meet his doppelganger. So what happens when Kit Kitab's only internet namesake turns up at his doorstep and insists they are meant to be friends? Meat Space is a hilarious yet troubling analysis of the modern world, where our lives have become a little more than an aggregation of shared content, and our online personas are more interesting than real life. So, this to me sounds like it's a commentary on um, online and social media use, um, mixed in with some stuff about meat. I don't know if you can see, but the cover is made up of meat. So that's weird. Um, yeah, and just another fun fact about this is that there's also a blurb on the back of it by James Smith who wrote The Machine, which is a dystopian novel that I have on my TBR down here. So if this goes well, not only can uh, Matt Haig get me to read this book, but then this book can get me to read The Machine, which is on my shelf. So we shall see. All right. And the last one that I found is The Butcher's Hook, and this is blurbed by Hannah Kent, who wrote The Bur Burial Rites, which I read earlier this year and gave four and a half stars. So, Hannah Kent says, utterly mesmeric. So, let's see what it's about. George in London in the summer of 1763. Okay, well, pause. So, I don't usually read historical fiction, so already off to maybe a bit bumpy start. At 19, Anne Jacob, the elder daughter of well-to-do parents, meets Fub, the butcher's apprentice, and is, awakening, and is awakened to the possibilities of joy and passion. Fub. What a very passionate name, Fub Fub. Alright, Anne lives a sheltered life. Her home is a miserable place and her parents have already chosen a more suitable husband for her than Fub. But Anne is an unusual young woman and is determined to pursue her own happiness in her own way even if that means getting a little blood on her hands. Well now, okay, the last line actually makes it sound like I might like it. There might be murder in this book. Is there murder in this book? That would be great. Um, I'm just now realizing like all of the little scenes on here are people, some people dying and like butch butchery. So that is potentially very exciting. I, yeah, I guess, I don't think I've heard of this, and I'm pretty excited. I picked it up because the cover looks awesome, and that's what drew my attention in the first place. So, um, yeah, I'm very intrigued, and I am very curious to how it's going to go. So we have, like, an Italian translation about a boarding school. We have a Greenland translation about a queer nightlife. We have a random social media commentary with meat on the cover. I don't know. And then we have a 1700s love affair where she might have to kill people. So, I mean, I'm not mad at my chances. So we shall see if I can really trust the recommendations of authors I have liked in the past. So my next update will be when I finish some of these books. See you then. Okay, hey guys. So it has been no time for you, but it's been quite a bit of time for me, and I'm here with my first update about the my favorite authors recommend to me. So I want to talk about Crimson, and the author that recommended it to me was Sophie McIntosh, the writer of The Water Cure. So she said, ferocious, inventive, and unlike anything I've read in a long time. I would have to agree. I loved this, and I gave it four and a half stars. So in this regard, this gets a check from me. This is, yes, an absolute recommendation that I can be really happy about. So in this one, we ha have followed five different people who are exploring their sexuality in Nuke Greenland, and every single character is going through a different experience. So the first character is dealing with exploring her sexuality and coming to terms with who she's attracted to. The second character is her brother, who has had something happen to him, and he has left Greenland, and he's writing kind of in a poetry style. 
And then the third character we're dealing with is an alcoholic who's dealing with sexual abuse that she endured in childhood and um, she's writing, her story is told mostly through text message. So the fourth character that we are introduced to is someone who is coming to terms with their identity um, and dealing with gender dysphoria. And the fifth character that we're introduced to is the partner, the person with gender dysphoria and dealing with the repercussions from that. So this was amazing. It was really good. It's short. It's told in five different kind of interwoven vignettes and I highly, highly recommend it. And I am absolutely going to say that yes, Sophie McIntosh did me a solid when recommending this to me. So this one was a success and I'm so happy about it. I highly recommend it, four and a half stars. And it's from Greenland, it's translated and it's written by a woman. Definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. And I will be back to you guys in a little bit to talk about the next book. Hey guys, um, it has been a second for you. It's been a few days for me. And I have done two more books in my Authors Recommend to Me video. Um, so the first one that I want to talk about is Meat Space by Nikesh Shukla. And it was recommended to me by Matt Haig, author of The Humans. He said, Meat Space is funny, damn funny. You should really switch off your computer and read it. Unfortunately, while it may be funny, it's just not what I'm into reading now. Um, so I actually DNF'd this, so I don't recommend with Matt Haig's uh, recommendation. Um, so in this one, we are following a main character who is really having kind of a tough time. Like, he can't get a date. He's, like, really getting into social media and really being just very negative about his life and where he is and comparing himself to others. This was published in 2014, and you can really feel the time difference in here of five years. Technology has come so far and a lot of the stuff that was happening in here isn't necessarily relevant anymore, as well as reading an angsty person's like online drama is absolutely not what I'm interested in reading. So I did read the first 20 or 30 pages and then I just really wasn't feeling it and I just really didn't didn't care at all, didn't want to read it. So that was a DNF for me. I don't recommend it, um, at least not for this point in my life right now. The next one that I want to talk about is Sweet Days of Discipline by Flor Jaggi. So this is an Italian translation, and this was recommended by Sheila Hetty, who wrote Motherhood, which I really enjoyed. And she said, Jaggi has a startling ability to go beyond, beyond the sentimental heart, the writerly niceties, the conventions that bind us, and the messy effusions of contemporary life. So this is a, basically a boarding school novel where we're following a young girl who is sent to a Swiss boarding school and she's documenting her life there. So her main interests are basically being bored of basically everything and then kind of falling in love with this girl named Frederique and it documents their way of living together at the boarding school and it's very much a a sapphic but kind of non-sexual love like she talks about bodies and forms but they never do anything so um, as time goes on then she idolizes another girl and just uh, I guess it just is a very interesting boarding school novel, an interesting point in time, but I just didn't really gel with the main character. I didn't connect with her. I also thought she was very, very superficial and too good for everyone and everything. And yeah, the plot of the story was also really boring. So I think it's just, I, I don't know, I get the same vibe as it. I get the same vibe from this book as I get a lot of books that happen at schools that are set a little bit older. Um, it has kind of similar feels to me as Catcher in the Rye, which I really don't like. Um, this has none of the drinking or prostitution aspects, but the like too bored for everything, um, disdain for authority or just anyone else, and just being basically bored with life, um, kind of NUE like. This, yeah, so I gave it three stars overall because I did read it in its entirety. The writing is beautiful. I will give it that. It's really, really stunning and I think it's a great translation. I just didn't gel with the main character and I did not care about the plot that much. So um, if this had been set in another period of time 
uh, and the writing had been a little less beautiful, there's a great chance that I may have DNF'd it. So um, I also am not sure if I would re say that this was a successful recommendation. So, so far for the author recommends to me, this one is a strong yes, this one is a maybe, <laughs> and this one is an absolutely not. So the last book I need to read to complete this video is The Butcher's Hook, which is recommended by Hannah Kent. Um, I haven't started it yet, it's kind of the chunkiest one of the bunch. Um, so we shall see, because right now there's one yes, one maybe, one no. So this one will be the tiebreaker. Hi guys! So it has been a few days for me, it's been no time at all for you, and I have finished the last book, which is The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. This is set in London in 1763 in summer, and we are following one main character named Anne who falls in love, or more accurately, lust, with the butcher's boy in town, and when forces start to impede upon her future happiness, she decides to take matters into her own hands. And this was very dark, a very slithering read for sure. Um, <laughs> really bloody. If you can't handle blood or gore, this is probably not for you. Um, but in terms of it being a successful recommendation, I think that this is a high four star for me. So. I do think that it was successful, so this is another success. So now I'm just going to quickly wrap up the four books that I read on recommendation of favorite authors of mine. So the lowest scoring one was Meat Space by Nikesh Shikla, recommended by Matt Haig, who wrote The Humans. I DNF'd this, it just isn't what I want to read. I'm not really into reading like daily drama contemporaries, um, especially since the social media aspect is quite outdated. It's four or five years old, which you can really tell within the first 20 or 30 pages. So this one was a fail for me. Um, next I have Sweet Days of Discipline, an Italian translation by Flor Jaggi. This was recommended by Sheila Hetty, who wrote Motherhood, which I really enjoyed. This one I gave three stars, so I'm kind of neutral about it. Um, you're following a young girl who's in a boarding school in Switzerland, and again, it was kind of I kind of felt neutral about it because the writing was beautiful and the scenery was beautiful, but there, the plot was so slow and I didn't care about the main character at all, so I really felt disconnected from the story in general. So this one is a neutral, not, not a pass, not a fail. So we've got one fail, one neutral. Third, we've got The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. This one I gave four high praise stars. Um, this is a very gripping story about a young woman who falls in love with a butcher's boy and she is going to do anything in her power to get the future that she wants. It's very bloody, very dark, very um, Slytherin, I guess, because uh, she's very cunning and she's like plotting and definitely out to achieve her ambitious goals. Uh, so this one was great and this was from the recommendation of Hannah Kent who wrote Burial Rites, which I highly enjoyed earlier this year. Um, so this is a huge success. So we've got one fail, one neutral, and one success. And then we have Crimson, otherwise known as Last Night in Nuke by Niviak Kornielsen, who is a Greenlandic writer, and this is a Greenlandic translation. And this was four and a half shining stars. So this is a huge success as well. So this follows five different people as they navigate their sexuality in kind of one area nuke in Greenland. So this was fabulous as well as this, so I really loved both of these. So overall I think that we had one fail, one neutral, and two successes. I don't know if that's better than the average reading score. Um, I feel like it might be because it's rare that I find four and a half star or five star books, so the fact that I could find a high four and a four and a half star maybe means that reading author recommendations is a good idea. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'm keen to do this again. Um, I'm hoping that I will find more books that I really like. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. That would be amazing. And I will chat to you all in another video. Bye!